More about the unfolding crisis in Venezuela is Eric Farnsworth, Vice President of the America Society and Council of the Americas. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. First, let's talk Thanks about the U.S. reaction. Did the Trump White House rush to recognize Guaido or was this a coordinated move that had been building up for quite some time? Well, it seems to have been a coordinated move, not just with the United States, but also many countries in Latin America and elsewhere. And you've seen this cascade of countries now uh, shift their recognition from Nicolas Maduro to Juan Guaido. Uh, and so it seems that there's, this has been under dis discussion for some time. The date of January 10th here, I think, is instructive. That's the date when Nicolas Maduro proclaimed himself president for another term based on fraudulent elections uh, last May, May of 2018. Uh, and so uh, there there was uh, intensive discussion uh, internationally in terms of what should be the response once Maduro did that. And uh, yesterday was the day that they chose to, uh, to move forward. So we now have two men in Venezuela claiming pe to be the country's leader. Each man has their own base of support inside and outside the country. You mentioned the cascade of countries that are backing each, per each person. So what happens next? Well, it's a very volatile, very tense situation. I mean, both uh, uh, individuals claim uh, the presidency of Venezuela, but only one has control of the military and the security forces mm -hmm. at this point, and that's Nicolas Maduro. And so uh, the security forces really are uh, the uh, arbiter here, and depending on what they decide to do, I think that's going to be instructive. Do they remain loyal to the regime? Uh, do they switch their allegiance to Guaido, or do they maybe sit this one out uh, and let circumstances uh, move forward as they may? But that's clearly an issue that people are looking at very intensively. And then I think you also have to layer on top of that the fact that there are any number of paramilitaries that have been supported and supplied by the, the regime. So even if uh, the military, the formal professional military, changes its loyalty and support, you still have uh, basically goon squads running around the country uh, trying to enforce the will of uh, the Maduro regime. So it's very complicated. It's very volatile. Well, wow. so uh, let's say if Nicolas Maduro resorts to violence, you know, using either the military or, or these goon squads, as you put it, um, how would the U.S. respond? Would the U.S. hit back and how? Well, I think that is also an open question. Clearly, there are additional steps that could be taken on the sanctions front, particularly in the energy sector. Uh, that is uh, Venezuela's, uh, basically, their only foreign uh, income earner at this point, and they rely on that uh, for things like imports of food and medicine and, and uh, paying off the military, frankly. Uh, that could be hit. The U.S. has refrained from doing that for some time because uh, they don't want to uh, unnecessarily uh, increase the humanitarian suffering on the ground in Venezuela of the Venezuelan people. Uh, you know, the use of force is probably not in the cards anytime soon uh, unless the Maduro regime begins to target U.S. citizens, particularly uh, embassy officials and diplomats. I think that's something we have to watch very, very carefully. Well, we are definitely at a tipping point for Venezuela. Eric Farnsworth, we appreciate your analysis and take care.